In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Christos Anesti, everyone. Nice to have you again. And uh, today we're starting the book of uh, Galatians, the Epistle of Saint Paul to the Galatians. Um, first, I'm going to start with the uh, Adil, uh, a small introduction and just a small review of uh, New Testament part. So, uh, and then we will dig into Galatians. Okay, go ahead if you need to use this. Thank you, Abuna. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure you heard this introduction several times. Each time we start a new book in the Bible, uh, Abuna always um, like to make sure that you guys know where are we in the Bible. So my this, this is the first book, of course. First book, what? <laughs> the first book. <clears throat> If, uh, for those who heard it several times and don't get bored of it, but piani repetition is good, um, or is always good. So the, uh, as Abuna said, we're going to start tonight the epistle to the Galatians, St. Paul to the Galatians. And as you can see, the writer is St. Paul, okay? Before we talk about the writer, I want to talk, I want to just review the New Testament books very quickly. Uh, how many books in the New Testament? Online or here, if you know how many, please answer. How many books in the New Testament? You can type it in the chat as well. Hmm. Type. I don't want to take... 27? Uh, 27 at Tante Mariam, sir. I'm at Tante Mariam and at Tante Nivine. Well, thank you, Tante Nivine. I can look at Tante, anyway. <laughs> So, yes, 27 books in the New Testament, and how, they, how do you know them? Very quickly, four books of the Gospel, St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, and St. John. Four books, followed by the book of, huh? book of what? Book of Acts. So how many so far? Five. Five. Then we have how many epistles, Pauline epistles? St. Paul wrote how many? How many epistles? Hmm? 14. So we have five plus 14. How many so far? 19 books. Okay. Then comes this, the Catholic epistles. Catholic epistles. How many are they? Seven. Okay. Seven. So how many in total so far? 26. 26. Four books of the gospel. We have to memorize this, like must. It is a must, M-U-S-T, big letters, okay? Abuna cannot start to talk about an epistle and we don't know this, okay? Just so, to clarify, the Catholic yeah. epistles are mainly the word Catholic, it means a universal, universal, right? So all these epistles are written to the universal church. The 14 epistles of St. Paul are written to individuals or a very specific city or region right that's why it's it's um it's unique that it's kind of like addressing a specific person or a region or uh, a city the other ones are addressing um the universal church uh, all the christians very good. okay very good point yeah. okay so how many how many books so far Sorry? 26. 26. Four, four books of the gospel, St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. John, book of Acts, five, 14 letters written by St. Paul, or 14 epistles written by St. Paul, so we are at 19, then the Catholic epistle, seven, 26, finally the book of Revelation makes it 27 books of the New Testament, okay? 27 books of the New Testament. So the, the book that Abuna will start tonight is the, the Epistle to the Galatians is one of the 27 books of the New Testament and one of the 14 epistles written by St. Paul. As you can see that St. Paul wrote 14 books out of the 27 books of the New Testament. So technically or mathematically, St. Paul wrote more than 50% of the New Testament, right? 
more than 50% of the New Testament, around 100 chapters of the 14 epistles. Who is St. Paul, the writer? Who is he? St. Paul is being born and raised in a, in a city or a region called Tars Tarsus, and Tarsus was basically a little bit out of Israel, okay? Um, and it used to be um, for a, for a high-end class um, people, okay? His parents were rich people, and uh, because they are rich, or they were rich, his, uh, his father bought the Roman citizenship. At that time, you can buy the Roman citizenship. You pay, and you get the Roman passport, basically. And because St. Paul's pay, uh, father was a rich man, he bought this citizen, citizenship, and there were tons of privileges to be a Roman citizen at, at that time. Also because the, the, the family was rich, so they educated St. Paul at a very like high level of education. St. Paul used to speak several languages, among them the Greek, the Aramaic, the Hebrew, like he was fluent in all of these languages. And the, the language of education at the time was Greek, the Greek language, because all the philosophers, okay, the Greek philosophy it used to be taught in schools and universities. So St. Paul was very strong in, in the Greek language and in the knowledge of the Greek philosophy. When he grew up a little bit, uh, his dad sent him to Jerusalem to learn the laws, to learn the laws of Moses. And he let him join a group. The leader of that group was, was someone called the Gamaliel. Gamaliel used to be a scholar, a Jewish scholar, teaching the laws of Moses and all the laws of the, the Old Testament. And St. Paul was one of his students. And the Gamaliel uh, loved St. Paul and basically was preparing him to make him, yeah, like to replace him in the future. Because St. Paul became so good in the laws of the, New Test of the Old Testament and the laws of Moses. So Gamaliel started to prepare him to take his place in the future. And, and as a result of that, St. Paul became a very strong uh, scholar in the Jewish tradition and Jewish uh, books. So when Christianity came, uh, uh, by default at that time, if you do not believe in, in our Lord Jesus Christ, you become, you have to oppose this because basically our Lord Jesus Christ came not to change the Old Testament as he said, but to make it complete, to fulfill it but not every Jewish person, person understood that. Anyway, so St. Paul started to persecute the church very, very strongly, persecuted it, uh, to, the, to the point that uh, in the book of Acts chapter uh, seven, when, um, when they killed, when the Jewish people arrested St. Stephen, and brought him to the synagogue and they sentenced him to death. St. Paul was there and consented, uh, agreed on his death. And he was there when the people came, they took the people came and, and put St. Saint, Stephen Saint in a hole and they took off their clothes and started to stone him. St. Paul told them, uh, leave your cloth here, I will guard it for you, but go and stone this guy and make sure he's, he's killed. And St. Paul was there. His name at that time was Saul, not Paul. So <clears throat> in the book of Acts chapter nine, uh, it says that St. Paul took some letters and some uh, uh, authorization from the Jewish leadership. Um, and he was on his way to Damascus to arrest the Christian people there and put them to jail. On the way to, the, to Damascus, our Lord Jesus Christ appeared to him and basically our Lord revealed himself to him and told him, you are persecuted me. 
Saul. You are persecuted. At that point of time, St. Paul or Saul realized that all what he was doing was wrong. He was fighting, he's going on the wrong fight. And all this persecution to the Christians, totally wrong. And um, he asked our Lord Jesus Christ, what should I do? So some, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ told him, go to, to, to Damascus and someone there will, will guide you or will tell you what to do. Our Lord appeared, appeared to Hanania, one of the bishop of Damascus, and told him to go and preach Christianity and baptize Saul. Obviously, Hanania, when he heard that, he couldn't believe it. He, like Paul or Saul at that time was very well known that he is a great enemy to the church. And even Hanania said to our Lord, our Lord, you know, this guy's like, he's not good and he, uh, like he's opposing your church. So our Lord told Hanania, listen, go baptize him because I chose him to be a vessel for me. Hanania went, baptized St. Paul, and from there, St. Paul is starting his preaching. St. Paul went on several trips. I just want to make it very quick here. Went, went on several trips to preach Christianity in Europe. Uh, during that time, something happened in Jerusalem that uh, mm -hmm. uh, St. Peter saw in a trance saw our Lord Jesus Christ basically telling him, go uh, to, uh, or follow the people will come to see you now. So people came to where St. Peter was staying and took St. Peter to one of the Gentiles, Cornelius. And St. Peter preached Christianity to Cornelius and baptized him. And that was like a major turning point in uh, preaching Christianity, because at that time, all the disciples thought that Christianity only for the Jews. And that makes sense, because it's for any Jewish person, any Jewish, Jewish person till today is waiting for one thing. Ask anyone, any Jewish person, what are you waiting for? They will tell you, I'm waiting for the Messiah. So it makes a lot of sense that, that the Jewish people should be the first one to accept Christianity. Okay? Unfortunately, that did not happen. So anyway, St. Peter went and Cornelius and his family believed right away and St. Peter baptized them. That was, a, as I said, turning point because now the Gentiles accepted the faith, okay? So let's go back to St. Paul. St. Paul started his preaching in Europe and while he was preaching, some people came from Jerusalem to the, to, the, to, to the churches in Europe that they believed, or the Gentiles that they believed, and said, how come, how come the Gentiles can enter Christianity right away without going through Juda Judaism first, or, or without being Jews first? So, like, for example, they have to be uh, circumcised. They have to follow the laws of Moses for a certain period of time, then, you can baptize them, then they become Christians. You cannot bring a Gentile person from the street, put him in the church right away and making him equal to the Jews. That's what the Jews were, were thinking. Remember, the Jews, the Jews used to call the Gentiles what? Dogs. Dogs. Okay, exactly. They used to call them dogs. So it was very hard for them to accept to accept the concept that a Gentile, a Gentile person can sit beside me in the church. And I'm a Jewish person from a Jewish or origin. Yes, now I became Christian. And this guy, the Gentile, is equal to me now. No, no, no. This is no, no. This is no, no. So this kind of new heresy came and attacked Christianity and it, at its beginning in Europe. So the Gentiles didn't like that and, and complained to St. Paul and said, listen, when you, when, you, when you preach Christianity to us, we believed. And you didn't say that we have to become Jews first. You did not tell us we have to circ get circumcised first and to do all of that first. You didn't say that, St. Paul. St. Paul said, yes, I did not tell you that. Who told you that? So they said, these people that they came from Jerusalem. So 
at that point of time, St. Paul decided to go to the, to the disciples in Jerusalem to find out if they said that or not. Remember, at that time, St. Paul couldn't, couldn't send an email or a text message to St. Peter. Did you say so-and-so? No. The only way to verify, to find out that he had to go from Europe to Israel and meet with the disciples and verify, did you guys send people to tell us so-and-so? They said, no, we did not do that at all. And they issued, they issued a decree stating that the Gentiles do not have to go through Judaism at all. They can only get baptized and stay away from adultery, stay away from um, eating meat with, with blood. And some, some tradition that the Gentiles used to do, they, used, they, they stay away from that. They only get baptized and no problem at all. They will be accepted in the faith like the, like the Jewish people. However, in, in Galatia, now let's go back to the book that I will start now. This heresy, this heresy became so strong in Galatia. And, and St. Paul had to write them this letter to tell them this is wrong and how on earth you follow such a heresy or such teaching. Okay? Glory be to God forever and ever. I mean, I will not take from you. Continue, continue. continue. Huh? What is? Well, why did you stop all of a sudden? Huh? Huh? Why? Why? Come, 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 come. I'm just looking for the. Come, come. Come. Just come. Just come, just come please, please. Adul. Come. Come, Adul. No problem. To double check here, this one. So, uh, continuing on what uh, Adil is saying is 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 saying here. Just want to get through this one. Um, the year that uh, the epistle was written. Uh, the epistle is considered to be one of the early writings, uh, the early writings uh, of the New Testament. Um, if not maybe the first, right? Um, it's written around the year uh, 49, plus or minus usually one to two years, right? Before that, we consider uh, the epistle of St. James maybe to be like before that, right? Before that, and, and you will notice that they're very close. Um, and that's why at the beginning I said, this is the first book, but um, it's one of the early books before even the gospels. You notice that it's written, um, when we say like it's written uh, before the gospel, so it makes you like, you open the book, the Bible, the New Testament, and you find Matthew, right? And how many times we said here, like even, um, uh, the first gospel was according to St. Mark, not according to St. Matthew, right? The book of the gospel according to St. Mark is earlier than um, Matthew. But before both of them, before both of them, we have St. James and St. Paul wrote, uh, and the first one uh, for St. Paul is uh, the Galatians, to the Galatians. Uh, as Adil was saying, basically, uh, the Galatian is a region. I, I tried to just grab uh, the, um, a small um, map. I don't know if you can see it from there. Okay. Uh, Galatian is a region that has some, like many of the churches that uh, mentioned in, um, in, in, in Revelation. Okay such as like Iconium, Listera, Derpa. Um, and it's right in the center of Turkey right now. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's Asia Minor, as it was called. And it's very close to Tarsus, where St. Paul is originally from. Okay. So at that time, uh, everyone is thinking, 
you have to be a Jew, right? In order to go into Christianity, in order to believe in Jesus Christ. And this is what St. Paul is going to be addressing here. Is like, yes. The Jews? The Jews b b thought, yes, that they are the favorite to God. God. Yes. Uh, so that's why even the new Christians at that time, as Adil was saying, they thought that, like, you have to be a Jew and then you become a Christian. So St. Paul in this epistle is addressing that. He starts to address that. And this is why right away you see him starting the epistle and saying, Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Right? He's claiming his uh, apostleship. Before even addressing or saying anything, you notice like when you read the other epistles of St. Paul, like he will always say like peace and grace, may the peace of the Lord be with you to all the saints, you know, in this city, to all the saints in, you know, uh, in, in, in uh, Philippi, uh, peace of God, of the Father, peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the grace, you know, he says like this, but you notice this one. Right away, he starts, Paul, an apostle, and, like, and he starts, an apostle. And, and he declares where his apostle, apostleship is from. So he's not even starting with a greeting. Okay? And, that, and that's more like when, when you start a letter at that time, there, there is a certain uh, template or certain like uh, default like usually you should follow when when addressing so if a, if someone superior right they will start at least saying to my people right and then they start if you are addressing someone who's higher you will say my lord i pray that this this you will be in safety and that you're in good health and that uh, everything is prosperous in your sight you're addressing someone higher Right. The fact that he's addressing and starting by saying Paul, right, an apostle, that means he's putting himself already like at a superior part, like he's higher and he's talking from a, 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 a position of authority. OK, but soon he's going to change that tone a little bit um, because he's trying to address something very dangerous. and. Before we get lost here, how is this relevant to me today? Okay. There are a few things, you know, when we start coming to Jesus Christ, the devil has to fight that. The first step, I'm trying to come to Jesus Christ. So he tries to stop me from coming to Jesus Christ. Okay. But then if I'm uh, if I'm, I'm persistent and I say, no, I'm going to go and try and continue my struggle and my strife towards Jesus Christ. So the devil will say, okay, I, I, uh, I, I lost that one. No problem. Um, now I'm going to try to put some stumbling blocks for you. Okay. Then I start my worship. Then I start also struggling right? Uh, to overcome all these stumbling blocks. And then the devil sees that and is like, okay, you're, uh, you're, you're doing really good. So let me switch the, 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 um, the, the tactics here. Now, instead of putting stumbles or trying to prevent you from coming to Jesus Christ, what I'm going to do is I'm going to like, you know, shift your focus, right? From Christ to the things that are around Christ. And this is what has been happening here in Galatians, right? They became Christians and they started good. And now 
the devil started to tell, yeah, okay, you can continue to be with Jesus Christ, but hey, don't forget, you know, the law of Moses. This is a, this is godly uh, word as well. So you need to continue also in, in, in that, and it's very important. And those who are coming new, they should also follow that, right? So St. Paul is going to come on back and say, well, no, wait a minute. Jesus Christ came to complete. This is what Adil was saying, is to complete or fulfill, actually, better, to fulfill the law. That means my relationship with Jesus Christ is going to help me to fulfill the law, right? Remember that St. Paul is a Pharisee, like Adil was saying, like educated at the higher, like the highest level possible at his time. And as a Jew, right, you have a very important thing to do every day. And especially as a Pharisee, you have rules to follow every day. And if you count them, you find about there are over 600, just over 600 rules to follow. 300 of them, about 300 of them, is not to do, things not to do. And another 300 or so about things that I should be doing, okay? Let alone all the other interpretations of uh, the priests and uh, the Pharisees. So St. Paul is coming in and saying, all of this is good, but without Jesus Christ, I cannot do any of that. And that's why he's starting his epistle by saying, Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia. Like we said, Galatia is, is, is a region, not just a city. So that's why he says to the churches. Now he's saying grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And he starts the, with the word grace. And this is going to be the focus of the whole epistle. The grace of God. The grace of God through which we receive all gifts and through which we are living and fulfilling all righteousness and goodness. Okay. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of our God and Father. So when he says this, he's again trying to address the same issue. He's saying Jesus Christ came to, uh, to, to save us from sins. Okay, not for anything else, not to the law of, of, of Moses, but to save us from sins. He might deliver us from this present evil age. So that is the goal. That is the goal of the coming of Jesus Christ. And that is the goal of um, becoming Christian. Number one is to be in Jesus Christ, to have the grace and peace of, of Jesus Christ, right? From God the Father, to save us from sins and deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of God the Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay. So everything is from God, through God, and for God. So the glory and um, uh, is to God. Okay. It's not for even us. So he puts uh, the salvation of Jesus Christ above everything else. He continues on in verse 6. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him. He's talking about him, Jesus Christ. Who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. So he's saying like, you, you believed in Jesus Christ. Now you're turning so quick 
you're turning away from from uh, the grace of, of Christ really quick to a different gospel. A gospel means is uh, the the meaning of the word gospel is good news, and there is only one good news. Okay, there is only one good news. So he says there isn't more than one. So it's just Jesus Christ, the grace of Jesus Christ. You're turning to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to prevent the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. So he repeated this, you notice he repeated it twice. That what you receive from me, basically, is it is what it is, no changing. There are some people are saying different things. So be careful of, of that. Even if I come back and I give you different words, imagine this is very strong because, you know, this is how much um, confident he is in himself, right? And, and of his teaching of what he received from Christ himself. He's going to explain that soon in the next few verses. He's saying like, I came and I gave you the news, the good news, the gospel. If I come back and I tell you other than what I taught you, okay, let me be accursed. You should not accept me anymore. So what I taught you at the beginning, it is what it is. If an angel from heaven came down and taught you different than what I taught you at the beginning, let him be accursed. You know? I cannot do that, to be honest with you, right? But St. Paul, because of the strength that he had received from Christ himself, as we're going to see, is able to say, it's one teaching. It's one gospel. There is no other interpretation. There is no other word. Do not let other people trouble you. He says, uh, we said like um, in verse 7, how come that there are some who trouble you and want to prevent the gospel of Christ? Right? Don't we do this to one another sometimes? Don't we do this to one another sometimes? It's like, you know, you're not fasting? Really? You're not fasting? How come you're not fasting? You're not a Christian? You should be fasting. And then all of a sudden now, my focus is not Jesus Christ, but my focus is how to be in good standing, like to, to fast. And then I struggle and I cannot fast. Oh, Lord, that means if I cannot fast, I'm doomed. I'm, I'm done. I cannot be a Christian. Because this is what was happening here. Some people came and told the, in Galatia, teaching that, you have to be a Jew and you have to do all these 600 rules. You have to follow them and you have to follow this, 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 and that. Oh, you're not following it? Oh, forget it. Try to follow them and then we will see about you being Christian. All right. But St. Paul here is putting Jesus Christ first and then everything else. I don't fast and confess and, you know, and pray and read my Bible in order to qualify to come to church and partake of the mysteries, right? You know, because like out of the love of the church, Yanni, sometimes we, you know, you say, uh, Habibi, if you, if you come you, to take communion, right? You, you need to come before the gospel, right? So if I come a little bit, after the gospel or like at the gospel, I feel like oh, I, I, I'm not worthy of the communion. But I'm just going to go and take communion, right? 
you have that kind of like revenue of the communion. But another time, you come to the liturgy very early. And if it's during fasting time, I'm fasting. And I'm keeping up my confessions, right? And I'm doing my prayers and I'm doing my Bible and I'm reading my Bible and I'm serving and I'm doing all of that. And then I'm standing there and it's like, yeah, I deserve to take communion today, right? Sometimes we do that. But I tell you what, according to Jesus Christ, when he gave the parable uh, of um, the tax collector, right? And the Pharisee who went up to the temple and according to St. Paul, the one who even came late, right? Uh, 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 saying, I'm not worthy to receive this great gift of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ is more actually worthy than the other person who came thinking that he or she is worthy. Okay. And this is what St. Paul is addressing here in, in a, like during the whole. Um, epistle um, is that I do not become worthy of God's grace through practicing certain rituals, but rather I receive the grace from Jesus Christ freely. Therefore, I uh, do all these things uh, 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 as as more of like uh, loyalty and more of uh, a responsibility and out of love rather than be it being like um, more like a credit sheet. I did this, then I deserve this, right? And that's why he said, the gospel I taught you, the gospel I, I, I preached to you, it is what it is. No angel, not even me, can change that anymore. It is what it is. That's it. Done. Um, then he continues in verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. Okay. A bond servant, I think we explained this before, right? I do what uh, we explained, uh, bond servant. Hmm? Remember? Yeah. The bond servant, when we explained, um, you know, uh, oh, we were, it was actually after the Bible study when we were talking about um, um, the prodigal son. When he came back to his dad and said, you know, uh, I have sinned before you, right? And before heaven, um, and I'm not worthy to be called your son, but make me as one of your hired servants, right? And we said a hired servant is paid for the things that he does. A slave, a slave stays in the house of the master and does not get paid, but get all the benefits of being in the house of the master, okay? A bond servant, or sorry, a son, a son stays in the house of his father, okay? And, uh, uh, and gets all the benefits, but he also owns everything, and he heirs of of as a son of God, of the father. So a bond servant means what? A bond servant back in the Old Testament, you know, at a certain point, um, when a slave, a Jew slave, is owned by a master, at a certain point, the master says you completed, if I remember correctly, it's uh, 40, uh, 49 years, or something like that. So at that point, he is free to leave. But then the slave, now he is free to leave, but now he comes back to his master and says, I am free to leave, but I want voluntarily to be 
still a servant for you for no um for for no salary for no wages i just mm -hmm. want to stay with you so that means he is free to stay free to leave but he chooses to stay with the master okay and in the house yet is not getting anything no wages uh, as a payment so when he says a bond servant here saint paul a bond servant of christ that means he considered him he considered himself a slave but he is still free to leave and free to stay okay you got that okay so he says uh i would not be a bond servant of christ if i still please men basically like i don't care what other people say i don't even care what the other uh disciples and apostles say it is what it is what i teach you and we know of course that saint paul at some point he went uh to jerusalem and he had a big uh argument with the apostles and that's when they had the first council uh how to accept um new believers from the gentiles without going through Judaism, right? Mm -hmm. So he continues, how far are we? Okay. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man, okay? He's saying basically what I'm teaching you, I did not get it from a person. I did not get it from a person, okay? Where did you get it, St. Paul? For I neither received it from men, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. So we know from this point here that, and we know from tradition, that St. Paul was taught for about three years by Jesus Christ himself in the desert. He's going to mention that in the next couple of verses. Okay, so all the apostles were, um, all the apostles received the apostleship from Jesus Christ during his presence with them. Okay, St. Paul received the apostleship from Christ after his resurrection. Okay, and another apostle also we consider him an apostle, is Saint Athanasius, the apostolic, okay? He received the apostleship through witnessing uh, the faith and putting the, the Holy Creed, the Nicene Creed. And that's why uh, some, some of the Coptic churches, you will see like, you know, we have the 12 disciples on the iconostasis, and then on either side, either side of, um, on one side, an icon of St. Paul, and the other side, an icon of St. Athanasius, okay? Some of the Coptic churches, they have this, okay? So he says, I received it from Christ. So how? For you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God, beyond measure and tried to destroy it and this is what adil was saying earlier that his dad was so rich that he paid for him to go and be educated right under uh the feet uh, under um the supervision or the guidance of his teacher Ramalail, which one which was one of the top scholars at his time in judaism okay and just to uh just to go to jerusalem is very expensive and then to stay in jerusalem without being like uh you know a residence there is even more expensive and then on top of all of that to pay to Ramalail to teach him is even more uh expensive okay so it shows that even though St. Paul was one of the top, so uh, as Adil was saying, was, was the next, was the next uh, in, in, in line uh, after Ramalail 
in Judaism teaching and scholar. Yet he says, I did not receive this apostleship or this gospel um, from man and not by teaching, not by being taught, right? Remember that I persecuted the Christians. I persecuted them and I wanted to destroy this uh, faith. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the tradition of my fathers. This is in verse 14, chapter one, Galatians 1, 14. He says like, and in like another place, even he says, you know, even in the law of Moses, I perfected the law of Moses. I like, I was like a, an A1. All those laws, I fulfilled them. I was doing everything. So nobody can even boast, boast beyond me. I, I, I'm the top, basically, okay? But then he says, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace. You, you notice here what? Again, he's talking about grace. Who else was mentioned in the Bible called from their mother's womb? Who? Huh? John the Baptist uh, in the Old Testament. Okay. John the Baptist, that's the New Testament. Samson. Huh? Samson. Samson. Okay. Good. Who else? Good. Huh? The one that was told the problem I have to fill button for what? Yes, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah one. One more. Samuel. Huh? Uh, not Samuel. Samuel was uh, was given by his mother. One more. Who was just before Jeremiah? Ezekiel? No, Ezekiel after Jeremiah. No, just before Jeremiah. Isaiah. Isaiah, <laughs> Isaiah. okay. I think it's Isaiah 9 when he said. So those claim that they were... Uh, they were separated uh, for the gospel or for the word of God from their mother's womb. And here, St. Paul says, through, I was called from my mother's womb through his grace to reveal his son in me. And we can uh, spend the rest of the night, the evening, just in these words, to reveal his son in me, to reveal his son in me, okay? He did not say to reveal his gospel through me. He did not say to reveal his son by me, right? But he said to reveal his son in me, right? So St. Paul, is saying basically, Jesus Christ is in me. Therefore, anyone who looks at me will see Christ. Anyone who hears me, hears Christ. And if that is the case, then I am also a son of God. This is what St. Paul is saying here. And this is a very, and many times when we speak about this, right? This is one of St. Paul's favorite expressions. When he says, I put on Jesus Christ. I put on Jesus Christ. I am in Jesus Christ. I boast in nothing but in Jesus Christ, right? I have accounted everything to be rubbish, right? To gain and be in Jesus Christ, okay? So when he says to reveal his son in me, 
basically he's saying so that I become a Christ. I become a Christ. One time I said this and one servant said, Abuna, what? To be a Christ? No, no, this is not right. To be like Christ. I said, no, to be a Christ. To be a Christ. Right? For Jesus Christ to reveal himself in us, that mean, that makes me a Christ, not like Christ. And we all the time, we say what? I'm trying to be like Christ. I want to speak and talk like Christ, right? But the truth is that we need to be a Christ, okay? Everything in my life has to be from God, okay, by God, and for God. Like, what St. Paul is saying here is, I got everything from Jesus Christ, and I am now living as Christ, and I'm living as Christ for the glory of Christ. Okay, so this is very important uh, thing. So everything, if I have this mindset, then everything I do becomes very important because it's Christ who is in me that is, um, is doing everything. Okay. Um, I think we can maybe just stop here tonight and we can take some questions. Uh, just reminding you, yes, maybe we're talking, but uh, this week and then next week, we will cover chapter two, but then the week after, it's gonna be a workshop where we have questions and you get to discuss it and, and, and you come up with, uh, practical ways and more um, uh, uh, answers uh, and, and and we get to present it. So keep in mind that like when we, uh, after two weeks, uh, there's a question here, how can I become a Christ? How can I become a Christ? Okay, Malish, this question, we, we can start with it next week, but remember, Every time I ask a question, how can I be a Christ? There is no way like, you know, I have to do A, B, C, D, and then I am Christ. No, I'm starting as a Christ. I'm starting as a Christ. And then I decide to not be a Christ. Guys, you, you understand? Thank you for the question. You get the, the, the point here? It's not like I'm, I'm building up to be a Christ. No. I already started as a Christ, right? At the highest point possible. And as I'm going, I'm actually going down and de degrading as a Christ. And therefore, I'm trying to go back to becoming a Christ. Yani the minute, the minute that I step outside the baptismal font, I'm a Christ. Because Jesus, uh, St. Paul, actually, in, in the next chapter, he's going to be saying what? I was crucified with Christ. Right? I rose with Christ. So in baptism, we are buried with him. So we rise with him. So after baptism, so you know, you know, like the second I come out and I receive the chrismation and everything, I am a Christ. So I'm already starting as a Christ. And as I progress in my life, I start, unfortunately, unfortunately, I start degrading. Therefore, what I am doing is trying to go back to becoming a Christ. 
I hope that answers your question. Tapan, you're annoyed that this answers maybe. Naveen? Or... Ah. Yes, of uh, course, I wanna. Gonna... Yes, go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead, Maria. I'll just uh, represent it so it's not as very accurate, but it's something that we do in teaching. So we say that you as a student, when you start your year, you start at 100%. And as you go, your marks drop, but then you try to pick it up to 100. Mm. So it's the same way, I think, as what you're saying. You start at the baptism at the highest. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we go down, but we try to pick it up and go up. Yeah. So that makes a bit of re reference, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sounds it uh, sounds similar. Yeah, because like when I'm taking a course, actually, yeah, um, I'm always you should at start with an A and then you go. Yeah, yeah. After my first assignment, that's out of uh, twenty percent, I get say eighteen percent. So now I'm I'm studying for the other uh, ninety-eight <laughs> points. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yes, Naveen. No, I said that does not satisfy me. Not <laughs> and yes, I am. I am annoyed. You are annoyed. I know. Because... <laughs> you're the one who said you're annoyed. <laughs> no, no, no. What's that? I will say. I am the... Yeah. So I, I just okay. want a much clearer answer, Yani. Because if I give you something easy to practice, then I'm I'm just I'm just uh, like just like you know voiding what I just said about what Saint Paul says in Galatians. Saint Paul is saying to them the whole the whole epistle: You have received Jesus Christ. You have received the grace of God. Then live through that grace in your life. Don't try to fulfill certain uh, laws in order to come to Christ. If I'm praying, I'm not praying to get closer to God. But I'm praying through Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm praying through Jesus Christ to manifest him more in my life. Okay. And when I pray. I pray to see Christ in me clearer because he's already there. Right? That changes everything. Okay. We'll talk. We can conclude here, but stay with me. Uh, stay. Uh, I'm just going to uh, conclude tonight, but stay with me. Okay? Don't go. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. And if we... Have any other questions? We can take them after. In the Father, and Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, bless us, O Lord, and give us, O Lord, to always live with you in your grace, to always be sons and daughters of light, that we may reveal you in us that you may manifest, O oh Lord, your grace and your love to the world through us, in us. Through the intercession of the Holy Tadokos and Mary, some of the apostles of the saints and the blessings of the Holy Resurrection, because for the Lord, the bread and blessing, our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name, thy kingdom come, it all be done on earth. Give us this day daily bread, forgive us our trespasses. Give those trespasses. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all curses and all things in power. And now the love of God the Father, the grace of His only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, the gift and commitment of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you.